everybody. Um, I know a lot of you guys are probably piling in right now, and that's great. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on our very first um, Rethink Con. This is a little bit of a play on words, uh, but we're really excited to talk with you guys um, really about this idea of rethinking connectivity, uh, specifically with a te technology that we know and love very, very much here at Synadia, which is NATS. And so uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, again, we're really excited to share uh, everything there is to know about NATS, specifically with microservice architectures, which I know is a topic that we haven't um, really covered as much. We've covered a lot around data pipelines. Uh, we've covered a lot about persistence and messaging. And we've started noticing a lot more trends in the customers that we've been working with and the folks who have been using our open source products around starting to use a technology, a connective technology like NATS to completely redefine their architectures. And so um, we have a lot planned for everybody. Um, we do have a schedule. So if you are on the stage um, or inside of this room watching this broadcast right now, you should be able to see a schedule around, around here somewhere. I want to do a couple pieces of housekeeping before we begin. By the way, my name's Jeremy. I'm an engineer. I work here at Synadia. And you're, you're going to see a lot of uh, Synadian faces today, folks who work on various parts of the Nats ecosystem and Nats clients and servers and all kinds of really fun things. And so we have a lot of fun planned over the next uh, four hours or so. Um, and it's going to be pretty fun and fast and frenetic and get ready to also be interactive. So we're going to be sharing some links with you so you can jump on, um, fire up your browser, and we're going to be all playing with Nats together. This isn't just going to be a lecture series. Um, we're going to have a fun interactive time. Speaking of interactivity, um, we also have uh, a couple things. So we have a Slack channel that we've created for, um, for this conference. If you guys want to jump in and start communicating over Slack before, you know, during or after the conference, you can. We also have um, live chat and comments on the right. Um, from this video that you're watching, feel free to participate in that. Jump in and ask Q&A. We're going to be running a couple polls. Um, speaking of polls, let's, uh, let's run our very first poll, um, which is hopefully showing up for you now. How familiar are you with Nats? We'd love to know, and we'd love to be able to speak to that. Um, again, feel free to pop in, ask any questions that you may have about, um, about Nats or about the content. Um, we, we'd love to be able to jump in and engage. We have a bunch of uh, folks here from Synadia that would love to answer questions, and we'll also answer them here on the stream. All right, so I think that's enough housekeeping for today. Let's get straight in to the content. I'd like to introduce um, Derek Collison. He's the creator of Nats, and he's a CEO and a founder of Synadia. And I'm going to bring Derek aboard to talk about what um, what we are actually talking about when we uh, mention rethinking connectivity. And so specifically, we're going to talk about moving from cloud to edge and some of the big um, d disruption and transformation that's happening there. And Derek has a lot of really awesome things to say about it and how Nats can fit into that ecosystem. So Derek, I'm going to bring you aboard and I'm going to let you uh, get at it. All right. Thanks for joining us, Derek. I'll let you start hey, your thank talk. thank you. Good to see you, Jeremy. Yeah, of course. All right, I'll hop off. Thank you for everyone uh, joining us today uh, and welcome. Um, you know, NATS is a modern connective technology uh, and it's an intelligent data platform. But I think it's important to think about why that's important. Um, today's technologies, these distributed systems, right, that, that we're trying to build are asking us and, and they're being asked to do quite a bit more um, to be able to meet these demands and take advantage of um, radically shifting and fast moving landscapes. Um, we believe that rethinking connectivity and data is the foundation to uh, a solution to this um, and distributed systems. And, and now what we're talking about is the how, right? Uh, and not the what necessarily of distributed systems. Um, Distributed systems, fundamentally, I try to make things very simple for myself, um, have two interactions. Um, they can ask and answer questions. So, right, we're thinking about microservices or service-oriented architecture. And they can make and process statements, right? Think event and data streaming, telemetry, et cetera. And microservices, at least from our perspective, are still at the heart of all modern distributed systems. Event and data streaming are generally used to allow systems, in my opinion, to better answer these questions, right? To, to gather enough data to personalize and, and get better answers to these microservices interactions. Um, 
And much of our work as technologists in, in this ecosystem is designing and embedding microservices, new microservices, making them produce better answers and at a lower latency, meaning the experience that either a person or a system um, is experiencing is fast. It feels fast, it feels instant, uh, and it feels personalized and it feels relevant. And latency is both processing time and distance from the request, right? And I think those are driving a radical shift in kind of how we are looking at deploying and utilizing uh, infrastructure today. So again, this is the what, this is what applications are still doing. And that fundamentally does not change any of that. Um, we don't want to, right? We, we believe in that, that, that model. But what we wanna talk about today is kind of the how, right? And again, the technical landscape is, is shifting um, and latency is one of the main drivers. Um, you can process a request instantaneously, but if it's on the other end of the world from where the request was being made, either by a system itself or by a user, it really doesn't matter, right? And we not only want now multi-geo, but we're being asked to do multi-cloud, and more importantly, what we consider edge-aware systems, intelligently edge-aware systems. And being able to deploy a distributed system across geos and cloud providers and out to edge and beyond today is a challenge. Um, a lot of people on uh, this conference, I, I assume, are challenged with some of these things. There's a lot of intelligent people that can make those things happen. But I don't think I'm saying anything out of the ordinary to say that it's it's tough right now. It's, it's difficult to get these systems to operate at scale, to do that at speed, to have the observability and the security that, that we really want and need. Um, I am a big believer in this transition to edge um, and the intelligent edge as we talk about it. I really do believe edge um, is going to dwarf cloud by several orders of magnitude. I actually uh, tweeted this prediction, I think, two years ago, and I said within the next decade or so, um, I really think that the transition is accelerating, at least from our perspective. Um, but Edge is still early. Um, it's very, very early. And it's kind of like the early days of cloud. Um, you know, the Edge providers and such, you know, and the, the CDNs that are morphing into intelligent edge providers are still kind of like silos, right? Uh, in the early days, you usually pick the cloud provider and you stuck with it. You bought into that ecosystem. There was a lot of, of services and things that made your life a lot easier. And I think Edge is kind of right at that um, perspective. Stateless for, for the most part, you know, whether you talk Lambda or Edge functions or, um, you know, WASM capabilities, um, you know, stateless is, is not too, too bad. But once that edge function really needs data, it needs state, right? It becomes kind of a different story. And I'm not trying to say that edge providers aren't working to solve this problem. They're working very hard, right? Because if the edge function is very close to you, but all of a sudden your data is across the, the globe, um, the experience is still not great there. But I think edge providers are incentivized today, similar to the early days of cloud, to provide the answer for their customers, for their ecosystem, and you know, for their silo, so to speak. Um, and so when that happens, a lot of different things are, are going to be moving and, and being revolutionized. And I think, you know, to kind of do a hat tip to some of the technologies, I think a lot of you know NATS users and cloud native and CNCF uh, folks are are aware of is um, Kubernetes kind of was like a little gatekeeper, right? It kind of started opening up the notion of multi-cloud as something that is approachable, especially for compute. Now they're starting to generalize around the different constructs there. And I really do believe that there's going to be a moment when this happens to not only edge um, so that you could do cross edge provider, but there will be a technology, maybe it's NATS, but something like that, that kind of kicks off this Cambrian explosion around the ability to treat all infrastructure um, the same. Any edge provider, any cloud provider across any geos, and even to what you consider maybe your edge, right? Because uh, this does not take into account what you consider your edge, uh, which could be stores and factories and distribution centers, IoT devices, smart infrastructure, cars, trains, uh, satellites, ships, medical facilities and devices, AI, AI systems, web applications, online gaming, 
and even the metaverse, whatever that may or may not become. What's really important from our perspective is Nats is already powering every one of these scenarios today as we speak in production. And so we think that there's something there that the ecosystem is starting to signal back to us that is extremely powerful. And we're happy to share kind of where we think we fit as a small piece into um, this ever shifting landscape. And so thank you again for deciding to spend your time with us today. Um, I think you're really gonna enjoy the next few hours and how the Nats IO ecosystem can accelerate innovation for you and your company. Again, thank you, welcome, and I'll turn it back to you, Jeremy. Thanks so much, Derek, for giving us that awesome intro. Um, I know you've, you've had a huge vision around this and it's really cool to see a lot of it start to come together in a lot of ways. And so I'm, I'm excited to explore that. Um, awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna... we've, put a, we've put a lot of work into um, this technology and, and you know, it's it's feels like it's been going uh, for quite some time. But I think what our viewers are going to see throughout the next uh, four or, or so hours is how these foundational changes can enable just an amazing amount of speed and velocity in terms of innovation across this, again, shifting landscape. So excited to see uh, folks enjoy the conference and give us feedback, please. We, we, are, uh, we love all kinds of feedback on how to do better, how things are working, how things aren't working, but we're super excited and we really believe that this is extremely early days, that the way technology and software and systems are developed and deployed is in the midst of a radical, radical shift. And it is going to be pretty fun over the next five to 10 years to see how this transitions. And we, we hope to play a small part.